Hey, what's up you guys? Man, it is so good to see you. Thank you for tuning in to this video. I see you, that's right. I see you, 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 and even you way in the back. Thank you guys for watching this video. Um, man, it's, it's been a little while since we've made a video, but today, today we are going to change that because we're gonna learn how to edit a music video with live concert footage. That's right, I've got some live footage from a concert behind me in a project over here, so we're gonna hop in and learn how to edit it into a music video to the music. So let's not waste any time, let's jump right in. Here we go. Before we begin editing, we need to understand that there are two main types of music videos. The first one being a really highly narrated, short film-esque style, highly curated, highly designed music video. This is gonna be all of your big name, big budget uh, musical acts. Think of like Taylor Swift, those type of music videos that you'd see on MTV, YouTube, anything like that. Now these are specifically made with actors with a script in mind to help tell the story of the song through its visuals. The second form of a music video is classified as a performance video. This is where you're gonna see your band or an artist just simply performing their song live. This could be a live multicam shoot like we're gonna look at today, or it could be just a rendition and performance of their song in a music video. So today we're gonna to be editing a performance music video of the song Good Good Love by my insanely talented wife, Anna Benton. We actually wrote this song together and we got to perform it at her EP, Night of Worship, a few weeks ago. So let's jump right in. First, let's talk about project workflow. Before we start anything, before we do any editing, first thing we always need to do is get organized. So we're gonna create a folder structure that sets us up for success in the edit. So that way we're not going hunting for footage, we're not having missing media links popping up in Premiere. We know where our footage is at and we've called it and we're ready to edit. Secondly, we're gonna sync the footage from all of our multiple cameras throughout the night. This night we had five cameras. So we're gonna take all of those cameras, sync them up to the audio of the recording song. Third, we're going to start our culling process. We're going to begin to pull selects from each camera of that song and actually begin our edit. And lastly, number four, we're going to export our footage, talk about export settings, get it ready for delivery and post on social media. So let's hop right in. All right, so just like I said before, we're gonna talk about getting organized. So let's take a look at my finder level folder structure here and go through how I have it organized and structured. So if we look here, I've got a folder called projects. This is where any project, uh, old or current, is going to be that I'm editing. So obviously this is a current project, so we're on current season's EP release. And then within this folder, I have all of these other folders that you'll see here. So number one is footage. So this is footage from any cameras recorded throughout the night. All of that goes into here. And then folder number two is our project folder. So this is gonna be where I hold all of any project folders. Photoshop, Premiere, Ableton, Pluralize, anything like that goes in here and it's organized just like so. Uh, audio, that's gonna be any audio, like mastered audio that we got from the night, to raw audio that we got from the recording of the night, music that I've downloaded and posted, sound effects, anything's gonna go in here. Number four, graphics and stills. So this is gonna be any sort of still imagery, any sort of still graphics. Those are all gonna go into here. Uh, After Effects nameplates, animated stuff, anything like that's gonna go in here. Then number five, exports. This is where whenever we're done with our project and we begin exporting for the web, social media, for any type of delivery, all of that's gonna go into this folder of exports. And then six, this is gonna be a documents folder. Sometimes with different projects, you might have documents between yourself and the client or yourself and whoever you're shooting the video for. So that's just helpful to have that there so that way you can have any PDFs, Word documents, scripts, anything like that can go in there. All right, number two, let's talk about synchronizing our footage. Now that we've looked at how our folders are set up and everything, let's look at how we're gonna take our footage and synchronize it to the audio that we've recorded. So I'm gonna be using a program called Pluralize 4 by Red Giant. And listen, if you haven't heard of this program yet, you need to go download it like right now. Go to their website, download it right now. It is so good, it saved me so much time. If you're shooting any sort of event or multi-cam setup where you've got multiple cameras all filming at the same time, Pluralize is by far the best thing that I know of to sync all of that together and make your life so much easier. It's literally a lifesaver, a time saver. So I'm gonna hop into that, open that up now and show you how to use that. 
All right, so I've got Pluralize 4 opened up here. This is the main window that you're gonna be greeted with once you open up the software. We see that we can add media, synchronize, or export. We can't synchronize or export yet because we haven't added any media that's been synchronized yet. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take my camera footage and again, dropping it into here and it's gonna create different tracks for our video and our audio. And then we're gonna be able to synchronize it. So let me do that. So I'm gonna navigate to my footage. I'm gonna take this first shot from camera one. Just drop this in here. It's gonna create a clip right here. And then we're gonna take our other footage from card four and so on and so forth and just keep dragging it in there. All right, so now that we've added all of our footage in, we've got a rough mix of the song in here from the night. Now we've given Pluralize enough content to be able to work and actually synchronize the footage. So now we see that the synchronize button is highlighted up here. So I'm just gonna hit synchronize and let's watch it do its magic. Just like that, all of our multiple cameras throughout the night, all of our multiple audio sources have all been synced together, matching all one by one. And we can look at the clips if you want to. There's this media window right here. So we can see this is our camera one shot right here that we're looking at now. We can scrub through here. Um, I can select different tracks. So we see camera three comes in right here next. So if I select camera three, this is the camera three shot. Um, and then we can go to camera two right here and we can select this. You can view this in real time. If you hit the space bar, it'll let you watch it back. Or camera four, this camera four shot. And now everything is just synced up and ready to work with. So now we're ready to export out of Pluralize and bring it into Premiere and actually start editing. So inside of Pluralize, it gives you this function that's called export timeline. So we're gonna hit that. And then basically we can rename this file. It saves it as an XML file. And an XML file, you can think of it as a file that basically whenever you open it inside of Premiere, it basically just tells Premiere, hey, grab these shots, this footage, this footage, this video clip, grab this audio track, put them together at this time and this, it's kind of magic. But essentially think of it just as instructions for Premiere on where the clips are gonna go. And this is how they're gonna keep their sync from Pluralize into Premiere. So that's fine, good, good love, rough for video edit. I'm gonna save this into our Pluralize folder that we set up. So projects, seasons, projects, Pluralize, good, good love. We'll save that, save. And then export format, you can save it in Final Cut Pro, Premiere, whatever you choose to edit in. Um, I'm in Premiere, so we're gonna export that. Everything else is fine, we're gonna hit export. And just like that, it's exported. Now let's look at Premiere and go import this XML file. So we've got Premiere open now. We're ready to import our pluralized synced sequence and begin editing and pulling selects from our footage. So this is the template uh, Premiere project that I have set up. So essentially anytime I have a new project or a new video that I'm making, I always have the same template folder with the same template project that I copy and paste simply rename it, adjust the parameters, names, bins, all of that stuff for that specific video. So like for today's video, if we look here, we've got a footage folder, a sequences folder, audio, graphics, and stills. This already has a master sequence at 24 frames per second already set up for us. Audio bins, graphics and stills bins. And it's just great because it saves you a lot of time when you're editing and in post. It's so much faster than having to sit here and recreate these individual bins, bin by bin. Um, until you're ready to go. It just saves a lot of time and can speed up your editing workflow a lot. So let's go ahead and import this pluralized sync sequence and begin editing. So I'm gonna click on my sequence bin here. I'm gonna hit Command I, and it's gonna bring up our import window. So here we are, let's go ahead and import this pluralized XML file. So here it is in our pluralized folder. Good, good love, import this. Now it's going to import and create a sequence for us that's already synced up that we can begin editing from. We can see it's already created bins for our individual camera shots. So this, so this is nice. So here under sync sequence, I'm just gonna rename this uh, good, good, love. Let's double click on this. And we can see this is our footage here, all of our audio synced up, ready to be edited. Now I'm just gonna start culling the footage, start pulling out what I call selects. So this is the fastest way that I found to edit a music video or, or anything that has uh, multiple cameras filming at the same time. So you go through shot by shot, essentially all of camera one's shots, all of camera two's, all of camera three's, 
camera fours, so on and so forth. And then you're essentially just pulling out the good sections and deleting the bad sections. And that essentially does a pre-edit of the video for you. And then you can go back and creatively finish the edit. So I'm just going to do that now and uh, show you a time lapse of me doing that. So let's hop over and do that. All right, so now that we've got all of our footage edited, we're ready to export and post. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click anywhere within my timeline. I'm gonna hit Command M. It's gonna bring up our export window, or you can always go up to File and Export. That's right there, File and Export. So now that we've got these export settings pulled up, let's go through some of these. So I want my format to be H.264, so that's the video codec. The preset, I'm gonna have match source high bit rate output name so this is where you can name your video and you can choose the destination for where you want to export it to so for us we're going to go to our project folder that we set up earlier we're going to go to exports we're going to call this uh, whatever you want good good love live seasons ep so next after all of that i'm going to hit export and then that's gonna begin exporting our sequence and our footage. And then we just have to wait for it to render. So essentially that's how to edit a live concert music video. Hope you got something out of that and thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video and you wanna see more like it, more content like it, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And leave me your thoughts down below on any new content that you'd like to see. Um, things I could go over like keyboard shortcuts, how I edit, more in-depth tutorials, stuff like that. I'm an open book and I want to make videos about what you guys want to learn about and can help you. So once again, thanks so much for stopping by and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.